Okay, today on Fat Daddy Eats, what we're going to make is red beans and rice. The way I do red beans and rice is, is kind of like a traditional New Orleans. First, we're going to use a trinity. I won these red beans. They're uh, camellia red beans. They come from New Orleans, uh, and you got to soak them. So these have been soaking overnight, and they're sitting back here, and we aren't even going to mess with them yet because what we got to do is we got to get the trinity ready because no New Orleans red beans and rice will be true without the trinity in it. And the trinity is onions, bell pepper, and celery. That is the Creole trinity. We're going to go ahead and start this butter to melting down. We only need one stick of butter because onions and bell pepper and celery, they make their own water. So there's my bell pepper. There's my onions. There's my celery. And come on, man. Y'all know I'm going to put me some minced garlic in there. Red beans wouldn't be red beans without some minced garlic up in there. And I'm going to put, there's one. There's two good tablespoons of that minced garlic. Or not tablespoons, teaspoons. But that wasn't a real measuring spoon. That's the spoon you get out of the kitchen drawer. Put that in. That's going to mix in with that butter. So it's going to basically be garlic butter that I'm putting the Trinity in. When this gets melted down, we'll start adding our veggies and getting them cooked down till the onions are good and clear. And then we'll, we'll start phase two, which is getting the protein ready for our red beans besides the beans themselves. And the proteins we're going to have is some good old Cajun sausage. Okay, I got this on about medium heat. And what you see in all this bubbling is that garlic that's actually frying in the bottom as this butter comes up the temp. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm holding the camera instead of putting it on that tripod so you can see what I'm doing. Get all that stirred in. Let's come in with some onion. Bell pepper. And the celery. Not as not as much celery. I'm not a, a great big celery fan, me. Stir all this in. We're gonna cook this down until it doesn't look like chopped up vegetables, but it starts looking like food. And then we're gonna add our proteins. So for me to prep for that, I need to put this stone back on the stand and butcher up our proteins. Okay, and I don't normally show labels when I'm doing stuff because if I was getting sponsored by those people, I'd be telling you about everything I'm using. I think it's real important when you're making a traditional South Louisiana dish that you use traditional South Louisiana products. So, and Savoise is out of Opelousas, Louisiana, and they have been making, it's certified Cajun. They've been making sausages, and they make a boudin. They make roux. They make just about everything you could want. We're going to cut up this sausage. Not only do I have real Cajun sausage, the Hickory, sm Hickory Smoked Pork Sausage, just a plain sausage, I also have a package of Andouille sausage for three pounds of protein that's going to go in with our beans in our trinity. Andu is a little spicier than regular sausage and some of the folks here in the house will want to eat around that. So I'm going to cut the sausage different so that they can tell that's andouille and that's regular sausage. They vacuum packed that good. Opelousas, Louisiana. And what I'm going to do to show that this is regular sausage is I'm going to cube this instead of having just slices and that is traditional casing you saw how tough that was to cut that is traditional casing that is not synthetic so for the regular sausage they're going to be smaller bites and these are going to be cooking down even more in the beans i'm just getting them started over here so they don't have to be cooked down to nothing mush but they're going to get and we're going to flash in the sausage with it too That's enough on the cutting. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I have got 
my veggies cook down to that. I'm fixing to add in this protein. That is two pounds of Savoie's original Cajun certified pork sausage. And you remember I told you I cubed this up. I quartered those. They aren't discs. That's so people eating the red beans can identify, all right, this is regular sausage and not andouille because andouille has a little bit more flavoring that some people in this household do not care for. So I'm going to put that in and let that get a little brown while I do that. I'm going to go ahead and cook or cut up this andouille. And if you'll look right here, that says uh, certified Cajun. Right out of Opelousas, Louisiana. Savoirs, they've been in business since like 55. Now traditionally, red beans and rice is a Monday meal in New Orleans because it's wash day. And the ladies had to tend to the laundry and they needed something they could cook that they could get started relatively easily and then come back and check on it about every 30 minutes or so. Once you get your water to a simmer and let it simmer for a few minutes and those beans get good and hot, at that point in time, they cut that heat back and they come in and they stir it every 30 minutes or so. Oh, that sausage starting to fry up in there now. We fix and get this good andouille in there too. So I put two pounds of original Cajun sausage chunked and I've got a pound of andouille. And I've got a four pound bag of camellia red kidney beans. And we will put links to all these companies in the description. Savoise and camellia in that description. Yeah, the thing about this natural casing and not a synthetic casing depends on how long they cook. Sometimes that casing gets a little sticky. And it will tear when you go to cutting it. Now, since I've got this sausage pretty much kind of glazed and the ends brown just a little bit and those veggies are ready to go, it's time to start our beans. So I'm going to move this back. And I'm going to bring the beans over here. And I'm going to up that temperature. There's our beans. And I'm fixing to add that. When that water starts getting hot, I'm going to add that into the beans. I'm going to let that water start getting on up there, though. This video, by the way, was requested by Bobby over in Georgia that grew up in the Best Bank over there. And uh, by Casey, a friend of mine down on the coast. So I listen. Y'all say y'all want to see how I cook red beans and rice? Here we go. Now, when you're starting these beans to cooking, that's when you have the risk because you got that heat at the bottom of the pot of making these beans burn and get stuck to the pot. So what you need to do about every five minutes or so, come in here and stir those beans that's on the bottom, get them up. And that's also letting the heat come up through this pot, heating that water. And when you get you a good little simmer, you're going to cut your heat back some and we'll add our veggies and our sausage. And once we get the heat cut back enough where you can walk away and trust that it's not gonna stick, that's when you can come back about every 20, 30 minutes. Okay, so now I hear a boil going. And this is the beginning of a boil. And I've been stirring these about every five minutes. And while I have it on this high temp, I'm gonna to continue to stir them what I'm trying to do is tenderize these things for 5-10 minutes before I cut them back to a simmer. And at this point is when I'm going to add my veggies and sausage. This will probably be the bowl I make the rice in tonight. i got to wash it. This meal is set for dinner time. And here it is lunch time. So we're going to let this thing cook down for quite a while. 5 or 6 hours just stirring every. 20, 30 minutes or so. And you notice that I haven't put any salt or any Creole seasoning or anything like that. I always add that in at the end 
because right now I want these beans to take up all these fluids and if you put the salt in there it makes it hard to get them cooked down into the tender state I like. I like cooking them till they're till it's bean mush. Let's put this lid back on and we'll stir it in about five minutes. Can't forget a bay leaf or two. This is the second one. I put one in there. Now this is just to add that flavoring. When it comes time to eat, if you come across that bay leaf, you don't eat that. I've turned my heat down a little bit. They've been, uh, they've had that little, pretty, pretty good little ball going there for about five, six minutes. Nothing stuck on the bottom that I feel. Got my bay leaf in there. I got it slowed down to what's going to be in simmer. This is the point where I can cover it and I can go off and start my wash. All right, so this is what you're looking for. Just a good simmer and about every 30 minutes or so, you get to come in and stir it. We've been into this pot now for about an hour and a half. And about every 30 minutes, what you're basically doing is making sure ain't nothing sticking to the bottom, which there ain't. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid back on this and let that keep on keeping on. All right, I'm going to, I've been stirring on this for about four and a half, five hours now. I got my beans cooked down. I got the consistency I want. Ain't nothing stuck on the bottom. We got the beans ready. So now it's time to make the rice to put in there with those beans. Now I made a big old pot. Ooh. I just found the bay leaf. I'm putting that up top so I can get that bay leaf out. There's that bay leaf. You don't want nobody eating that bay leaf, no. Put that down there in the sink. It's done. It's, it's, it's due diligence. Now, another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to taste. Now, I've got garlic. I've got onion. I got bell pepper. I got celery. I got all that sausage in there. Let's see. That's pretty spot on, but we're still going to add, and, and, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to add some Tony Cha-Cha's because I showed you Savoise, and I, and I told you about Camellia, so I'm going to go ahead and add, that's eh, about a tablespoon of Tony Cha-Cha's. I'm going to add in there. Now we're going to be adding this into rice. So that's going to be fine. I'm not going to overpower or heat up this stuff more than it needs to be. And I'm stirring that in, trying to get it where it goes through all those beans. And, and these, these beans, I'm still leaving them sit. Me, So... They're, they're, they're going to be set on the oven, taking up that spice. That's pretty dang good. So, what I'm doing now is I put a pound of rice in here, finger digit. I measure right up to that line. I'm going to add a little salt into my rice. All right, so I've added my rice. I got my water. And I'm going to turn this burner back here. Up on dual and high. I'm going to bring it to a ball. And I am sitting here with that spoon ready to stir. Keep that from burning on the bottom. Make sure I find the top that fits. Yeah, that fits just right. Set that off to the side. And let my water start getting ready to ball. There I go. I got some heat up under this pot. When I got that rice on there, I want to make sure none of that sticks on the bottom. I want to make sure I stir that. Now, another thing I did with this rice before I uh, put it on the stove, I washed it. I, I washed this rice. I put a, a pound of rice in this little bitty um, saucepan. And what I did was I ran water through there and tried to get the starch off of it. And so I washed it seven, eight times. And I got most of the starch out. 
So right now, all I'm doing is trying to bring this water to a ball. While I got my spoon, I'll keep stirring that. This is sitting there taking up the Tony Cha Cha's that I put in. It's not Tony Cha Cha's, y'all. That's what I call it. It's Tony Shasheries. I call it Tony Cha Cha's. Um, so it is taking up that spice and the rice. Once I get it to a good boil, you're going to see what I do. I'm, I'm going to lower that heat and cover it and let it sit for 20. And you saw that I had a good index finger, which is an inch of water over the top of that rice that was in that bowl, in that pan. All right, now I got a ball going on this rice. So what I'm going to do is shut down this temp. There ain't none stuck on the bottom. I'm going to shut that temp down to a low simmer. Stir it a few more times until those bubbles slow down. And once that happens, I'm going to put a lid on it and let it simmer for 20 minutes. I think I'm gonna put, I'm gonna stir a little oil in there, to make sure it don't stick. I pull that temp down, it's just bubbling just a little bit. I'm gonna put that on there and set my timer for 20 minutes.